Thank you, Michael. After you heard all the inspiring presentations, I would like to sum up the day with just before we open the line for Q&A. In my short presentation, I would like to provide you with insight on the way we manage financial aspects of ICL to enable the execution of our leadership strategy. The fundamental of our finance philosophy is around cash generation and the allocation of capital. The center and basic of all of this is the cash generation power of the company. Here, we constantly work on working capital optimization, saving initiatives, restructurings, better purchasing, and many other measures that put ongoing cash generation in the center of our day-to-day -day activities. After we generate the cash, we look at the capital allocation. Here, we are constantly optimizing between three angles of a triangle. The first angle is to secure the future growth engines of the company to ensure the company will continue to prosper. On this front, you heard a lot today on the plans we are executing. The second angle is to maintain a strong balance sheet. Here comes all of our activities around finance risk management, managing our debt portfolio, and maturities. As a core part of our strategy, we are exposed to commodity markets, mainly the potash and phosphate commodity markets. As such, we should maintain a strong balance sheet that can absorb the natural volatility of commodity cycles. Being an investment grade company is another aspect of this angle, and this year showed why it is important in allowing us to navigate our businesses in a resilient way, even at stormy waters. The third angle is the shareholder's return. The quarterly dividend payout yield is among the highest in our industry. To summarize this slide, we are optimizing between the three angle of the triangle, and we will continue with this balanced approach. In this slide, I wanted to share with you the enablers we have to execute our leadership strategy. The sources of funding is the cash flow generation from ongoing operation and our debt capacity under the investment grade midpoint framework. The uses of funds go to CapEx investment, dividend payout, and the balance represent our financial flexibility in allocating capital. You can see that we already have enough financial flexibility to execute our growth plans that we have outlined today. As we move forward over the next five years, the financial flexibility will continue to grow to over $4.5 billion in 2025. These slides outline the way we manage our debt portfolio. We maintain over $1.1 billion of available liquidity in a combination of cash, deposits, and immediately available credit facilities. Moving to the maturities of our debt portfolio, we moved over $750 million of debt maturities to over 10 years. You can see that we don't have any meaningful principal debt payments in the coming years. Return on invested capital is another important aspect of our finance management and our internal allocation of funds between the various business units. You can see a large volatility of ROI between the different businesses as they are very different with their capital needs. Over the next five years, we see good improvement in all of our businesses, yet the different characteristics of them will remain. Overall, ICL target is to grow to double-digit ROI. When we are evaluating new projects, we are looking to get an ROI of over 15%. The bottom of the slide outlines our EBITDA gross projections that you also saw in Raviv's presentation. 2021 will be kind of a back to normal year and all the way toward 2025 with over 50% increase in EBITDA. Raviv already presented our CapEx target. The main point I wanted to share with you in this slide is that going forward, we see CapEx needs of around $550 million per year. This average targeted annual spend should cover our ongoing efforts to maintain all of our sites 
in optimal operational conditions. You can see that such capex spend is significantly lower than the capex investments we did over the last five years, where we had to invest some significant infrastructure needs. You heard from all the presenters today how exciting we see our growth potential over the next five years and beyond. But also our short-term outlook is very positive. I highlighted here few of the drivers that will fuel our performance over the next few months and quarters, just to name few. The recovery we see over the last few weeks in the commodities prices, potash and phosphate, the coming contract negotiations for potash in China and in India that will start in just few months, the ramping up order book from our customers in our bromine value chain, the general world recovery from the COVID, the shift toward long-term contracts are not talked about and more. You heard today the main five growth engines that will take us forward to 2025 and beyond. Rado talked about the food and the alternative proteins. Eli described our move toward next generation fertilization. Anat discussed the EV and sustainable applications in our bromine value chain. Steven shared with you the digital farming transformation. And Ananta talked about the moves around new materials. All of this will take us to the second half of the decade with even stronger growth. In my last slide, just before we move to Q&A, I wanted to share with you again the interactive data center we recently added to our website. We want to enable you to track and follow our performance in executing our leadership strategy. This data center has two main folders, financials, and ESG. We assembled many figures from our financial reports as well as from the ESG annual report we published in early August. Again, we feel that this is a useful tool for you to monitor how we are doing and we welcome your feedback to make it even more useful for you. With that, I will turn the mic back to you, Michael. Thank you.